Hello, everybody. So I make that three o'clock. So we're going to start our webinar. I just want to welcome you all um, to our webinar, Oscilloscopes in Education, How Picoscope Meets the Challenges in Remote Teaching and Distance Learning. I'm Gemma Hull, the Marketing Manager here at Pico Technology. Um, and I just want to go through some housekeeping. So your microphone is currently muted and your video is turned off. The webinar will run for approximately 45 minutes with 50 minutes of questions and answers at the end. Should you have any questions, obviously we'd love to hear any questions you do have, can you please put them in the chat panel and I'll put them to our presenter at the end of the webinar. And just to let you know, the webinar is being recorded and a recording will be available approximately 24 hours after this event. So I will now hand over to our presenter today, Mike Purday, our distribution sales manager. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much indeed, Gemma. And uh, I'd like to echo Gemma's welcome to this, this webinar on Picoscopes in, the, in uh, remote teaching and uh, distance learning. So thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, we're going to spend the next 45 minutes or so looking at why Picoscope is ideal for uh, remote teaching and distance learning. And I'd like to take you through, uh, first of all, our agenda. So I'm going to be presenting the webinar and we've got a couple of videos that have been prepared by colleagues of mine here in the test and measurement team, uh, one by Carl Bradbury, who's uh, also part of the distribution sales management team, and one by Stuart Merlis, who's our applications engineer. Ooh. So first of all, then, uh, a look at uh, a little bit of the background to Pico. So Pico Technology is a UK-based company. We're headquartered just outside Cambridge here in the UK. Uh, we were founded in 1991, so we're nearly 30 years old. We're going to be 30 years old in July. And we've been very proud of the fact for the last 29 years, we've shown continuous year-on-year -year growth. And we're on target to, uh, to match that trend again for the 30th year. So extremely proud of, of that fact. And we're, we're a, a privately owned company and we, we're, um, the, the continuous growth has been fantastic. So uh, our, our board and our owners are, are very proud of that. Uh, as you may well know, we are a manufacturer of PC-based test and measurement equipment. And we pride ourselves on supplying TNM equipment at fair prices. Uh, and this equipment is ideal, as you'll see over the course of this webinar, for, for teaching and for laboratory work. We have regional operations in the United States and also in China, in the Asia Pacific region. And we're able to support our customers globally with a, a network of distributors that are able to support and supply our equipment in country. And you can see a list of our distributors, global distributors on our website. Uh, in terms of size, we're about 130 employees and growing. We're adding to adding to the staff count uh, all the time. So uh, that's a little bit of an overview about us. You can find out more details uh, on our website, picotech.com. So take a look then at the agenda for this webinar. Uh, we're first of all going to look at the background, so how teaching has had to adapt in the current environment, the current pandemic environment, and what alterations universities and college have, uh, colleges have had to make in order to be able to deliver our content remotely. We're going to then spend a little bit of time looking at why Picoscope is an ideal partner for our education, not only the hardware, but also the Picoscope software. And at that point, I'm going to run a, a demonstration of our 2204A, our entry level Picoscope, together with Picoscope 6 software. And that's a demo that's been pre recorded by my colleague, Carl Bradbury. Uh, we're then going to move on and look a little bit at how universities and colleges have used Picoscope to meet requirements for distance learning and remote teaching. And at that point, I'm very pleased to be able to share with you a, a pre-recorded interview with the University of Birmingham on their use of Picoscope. There's a, a use case scenario there. They've used and adopted Picoscopes for uh, remote teaching. So I'll share that pre-recorded video with you. 
And then towards the end of the webinar, we'll look at other Pico products. So we, we have a, a portfolio of products that include RF products. And again, some of those are ideally suited for educational use. So we'll talk briefly about those. And we'll finish the webinar with a, a brief demonstration of our VNA, our ve Vector Network Analyzer, together with Pico's Network Metrology Training Kit, which is a, an ideal pairing for teaching our introduction to the use of, of VNA technologies. So first of all, then a little bit of background. How has university teaching had to adapt to the current pandemic situation? So we all have been living in, in, in a slightly different and rather strange times for, for, for nearly a year. So we've all had to adapt the way we work and the way we do, deliver content uh, and universities are no different. So at the start of the pandemic, back in March of 2020, it was unclear how long remote learning and remote teaching would need to carry on for. Uh, I think we thought that perhaps the pandemic situation was going to be over quite quickly. And here we are nearly a year later, still in, in measures to, to deal with it. So some organisations moved quite quickly and early to declare that online teaching was going to be their modus operandi for, for, for the next academic year. So I'm quoting here the BBC News website from the 19th of May 2020, uh, where it says that the universities of Cambridge and, and of Manchester moved very quickly and very early on to adopt to online teaching. Indeed, the University of Cambridge said that in the academic year commencing in September of 2020, that there wouldn't be any online, uh, any in-person teaching, all teaching would be online. So many other institutions have also followed that that lead the early lead that manchester and cambridge took uh, but everybody's faced challenges in having to adapt to, to deliver content remotely so uh, quoting the uwe our uh, university of western england in, in bristol uh, lockdown uncovered numerous challenges and barriers with online learning but also proved how effective it can be so one of the things that I'm going to talk about, one of the themes to this webinar is, is the, the effectiveness of the use of Pico's products in overcoming those uh, challenges and barriers and delivering effective online learning strategies. So what are the challenges of teaching engineering remotely? What are the issues? So looking briefly at some of them, then obviously teaching engineering is, is, is a practical subject so teaching would normally take place as well as academic lectures teaching would all, all normally take place uh, also with the practical sessions in a lab with test equipment in that laboratory and clearly with students studying remotely from home or from wherever that is not not possible so that's one challenge that has to be uh, has had to be overcome Year groups can often be large, so depending on the size of the institution uh, and the, the size of the intake, then you can be looking at cohorts that are perhaps more than more than 200 students. So you've got to have the ability to get equipment to large numbers of people. So remote teaching and distance learning has to be straightforward, both in terms of the course material, the syllabus, and in terms of the equipment that's used, because supporting that equipment remotely is more difficult potentially, and delivering that the content that the syllabus remotely is equally uh, a challenge. So focusing specifically then on the, the, the equipment that's involved, the equipment needs to be portable, it needs to be easy to use, and obviously because of the cohort size, the sheer number of people, the sheer amount of equipment that you might need, uh, it needs to offer excellent value for money. So universities all over the world have turned to, to us here at Pico to overcome those challenges and to be able to use Pico products to deliver our teaching remotely. So a little bit of a look at why PicoScope is the ideal partner for education and there's quite a wide range of, of reasons and we'll explore these in a, a little bit of detail. So firstly and foremostly, the form factor of our RPC connected oscilloscopes is, is a major, major, major plus. So uh, the ultra compact design, you can see our, our 2204A there, um, both 
you know, flat on a picture on the right hand side, but also being tucked into a into a shirt pocket on on the left hand side. So very small, ultra portable, ultra compact design allows use anywhere. So very important because obviously bench space is a premium if people are working from home, and you need to be able to send the equipment out to the students to be able to use. So the ultra compact design and form factor are very important. Value for money. Now we've touched a little bit on the, the size of the cohorts. Uh, value for money, very important. So the entry level 2204A that you see there in the pictures is 139 US dollars or 119 euros or 99 pounds sterling. So that sort of price level makes large orders for teaching uh, entire groups, entire cohorts very possible because you're looking at something that in many respects, many cases, is not much more than the cost of, uh, of a, a, a textbook. So it's very possible to purchase a Picascope for each student. I mentioned before the PC connected aspect of this. So obviously uh, everybody, all students have got access to a personal computer and one of the great beauties of our PC connected oscilloscopes is about 70% of the, the functionality you would see from a traditional oscilloscope is contained in that PC. So then you're saving on both cost and also on bench space. So using uh, the PC connected part of the oscilloscope in, in, in a Picascope means that the students have already got the access to that PC and they've already got the, the familiarity with the use of the PC. So all of the above is a combination really which uh, offers advantages that traditional benchtop oscilloscopes can't match. You wouldn't be able to ship them out to students. They're not intuitive to use in the same way as scopes. So uh, all things that have stood us in very good stead for this remote teaching and distance learning. So just touch then very briefly on the software. So Picascope 6 software and remote teaching. Uh, the software itself is free of charge, so it can be downloaded as many times as you wish onto as many multiple machines as you wish. And importantly, once you purchase the hardware, the software is upgraded. Uh, if the software is upgraded, the software is upgradable. Uh, and those upgrades are retrospective. So, um, retrospective upgrades for, for existing hardware users. Uh, it's a proven and reliable software platform which works with all Picascopes. So worth pointing out that uh, the software package is the same for the Picascope 2204A, the entry level scope, throughout the entire real-time oscilloscope range. So topping out with our, our uh, 6000 range, uh, 500 megahertz high bandwidth. Our high specification scopes. So once the students become accustomed to using Picascope 6, it's the same software platform that they're going to be using uh, if they move to use Picascopes in later roles, perhaps post post uh, graduate education, or, or indeed moving out into industry. So that's another important point. Uh, if you have students that are studying remotely and perhaps their, language, their first language is not English, they might prefer to use the software with their own local language. And we have multiple language support built into the software. And as I mentioned, the, the software can be downloaded on any, onto any PC, anywhere you wish. And uh, there's the possibility of allowing students to simulate hardware if needed so they can get up and running very, very quickly and they can do so before, if they wish, before they receive the, the hardware. And a final thing with the software to bear in mind is that the online file transfer allows easy transfer of files from, from the students' PCs to uh, back to, to academic departments. Uh, and this means that marking coursework, if there's any assessed coursework or are there any questions about what, what the students have done, it's very easy to deal with that. So uh, another major plus point. So we've got the hardware, we've got the software. Now, the final thing, obviously the final part of any practical uh, work is the ability to actually build devices and circuits to test. So relatively recently, Pico has uh, started working with uh, analog devices using their uh, their parts and component kit, the uh, ADALP2000 parts kit, which contains a, a large selection of components which are ideal for creating circuits and devices. So uh, 
we would recommend this kit. It's uh, inexpensive. It's, it's around fifty pounds sterling, uh, and it's a versatile way for students to build and test circuits. So what you see in the pictures below is uh, you see the, the parts kit on the left hand side with all, all the different components in and then on the right hand side you see uh, a picoscope and there's a picoscope 2000 there using to being used to probe uh, a device that one of my colleagues Stuart Murnis has built uh, and he's built a, an audio amplifier and he's using the picoscope there to, to, to probe the, the circuit under test. So uh, that's the third part of the system. So you have the hardware, you have the software, and, and now we're recommending these analog devices kits as a way of building circuits for students to, to actually test. So at this point, I'm going to move to uh, a video that one of my colleagues, Mr. Carl Bradbury, has put together. So Carl's done uh, a brief demonstration video looking at the hardware and software with the 2204A, uh, looking at testing a bandpass filter. So I'm going to play you a, a short video demonstrating that now. In this demonstration, we're using the Picoscope 2204A to characterize the frequency response of a bandpass filter circuit. The 2204A is a compact 10 MHz two-channel PC oscilloscope. Priced at £99, it's a popular choice of oscilloscope for teaching labs. It includes a 100 kHz signal generator with sweep function and connects to a PC running Picoscope software which includes a spectrum analyzer mode. The circuit under test is a simple bandpass filter using an RLC network to cascade a low pass and a high pass filter. The center frequency is calculated to be around 7.3 kilohertz. With a signal generator and channel A of the oscilloscope connected to the input of the filter and channel B connected to the output, I select the signal generator icon and turn on the signal, which is currently set to sine wave of 1 kilohertz. We can increase the frequency manually and see how the circuit behaves at set frequencies. Seeing the phase relationship between both channels and the amplitude of uh, channel two as we step through the frequencies, like so. Or we can do a continuous sweep from 1 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz and uh, observe the changes in real time. But to get a, a frequency plot we need to go to spectrum mode Select uh, 24 kilohertz span, and we only want to see, we're only really interested in channel B, so I'm going to turn off channel A, and then I'm going to select in the spectrum menu. A linear scale because the circuit doesn't really have a great deal of dynamic range so we don't need to be in logarithmic <clears throat> just adjust the scale so we can see the baseline and then really we want to see what what is happening at the peak so I'm going to I'm going to reduce the spectrum bins and put it into peak hold and 
gradually it will build up a plot of magnitude versus frequency like so and we can turn on a measurement on the B channel which is frequency at peak and uh, I think we just need to let it run through again before it can find the peak for the measurement here we can see the the measurement reaching its peak at 7.7 kilohertz okay so thank you very much to carl for that so that gives you i hope a flavor of the the picoscope 6 software and how a, a picoscope 2204a can be used in a, a real application so i mentioned earlier in the presentation that quite a number of our universities organizations have adopted picoscope for our remote teaching so i wanted just to to highlight some of the the organizations that have partnered with us and that are working with us are uh, all of the logos that i've got here that i've taken from the relevant press sites uh, for you know use in the public domain but you can see we, we've got a number of universities here a lot of them are uk based obviously we're a uk company and we've worked quite closely with a number of uk organizations to produce this webinar uh, but we have got customers uh, in universities and academic institutions globally so uh, the university of boston has has bought quite a number of hundred picoscopes for use in their teaching kit they put a kit together for uh, remote teaching and the picoscope is one part of that uh, Vermont Tech College in the USA and also as far afield as uh, Seoul National University in, in, in Korea so we're delighted to be to be working with all of these institutions and it's great that, that all of these different um, universities have taken up picoscopes for uh, their remote teaching challenges so some of the universities we've been working with have been kind enough to give us some feedback on how the picoscopes have been used in, in, in remote teaching. So uh, I've quoted some short excerpts here. So the University of Bristol here in the UK, picoscopes are enriching and fun compared with the lab, which I think is a great quote because it really highlights that you know teaching and remote learning ought to be enjoyable. So the students are enjoying working with the picoscopes. They find them fun and enriching, which is great. Vermont Technical College in the United States came back to us and said we're, we're absolutely delighted the students and the faculty both love the scopes which is, is great so both sides of the of the, the educational system that the faculty and the students are, are really really impressed and then thirdly the University of Birmingham said rather dramatically but rather you know rather lovely quote Picoscope saved our lab and they what they realized very early on was that remote teaching wasn't going to be um it was going to be needed in order to keep things going so in-person teaching wasn't going to be possible and the picoscopes allowed them to continue delivering the the content uh, that they wanted to deliver so uh, that's fantastic really nice feedback there so two universities very kindly agreed to go uh, a little bit further and give us a, a testimonial on the use of the products so our uh, Dr. Francesca Fornetti, Senior Lecturer in the Department of Electrical and uh, Electronic and Engineering at the University of Bristol, kindly agreed to give us a testimonial. And he has incorporated again the picoscopes within the home laboratory kits. So uh, he's come back and he said that the, the um, students really enjoy using the lab kits and enjoy using the picoscopes. And he talks about there being a much more relaxed environment, free of time pressures that timetable labs can bring about. So obviously there's an advantage there that the students can work at their own pace. Uh, and he also uh, looks at the, the theme that um, they can great the students can gain a, a greater insight into the operation and characteristic of circuits. So going back to talking about the uh, the parts kit, 
students can actually build their own circuits. They can experiment with their own ideas, try out different circuit configurations. And Francesco feels that this greatly enriches their learning experience. So you know, fantastic to have such a positive testimonial on, on that use. It's really good. And secondly, um, Roger Berry, teaching fellow uh, in the Department of Mechatronics Robotics at the University of Leeds, kindly agreed to give us a testimonial. And Roger says, after test driving, nice, nice phrase, test driving the 2204A from a practical lab perspective, it was an obvious choice. So the scope, despite the fact that it's very, very good value for money, performed excellently. And he goes on to talk about the advantages of remote labs, stating in his opinion, in his opinion, they actually provide a better experience for students, which is very interesting. So students, he says, are more self-motivated. They become more, with the correct support, more independent. Now, another interesting point, because obviously undergraduate teaching is usually exactly that. It's teaching led as opposed to master's level or, or, or doctorate level education, where the students are working themselves to, to, to learn. So it perhaps gives an edge to, to students studying at the undergraduate level to, to become more independent, to go and find the answers out for themselves. Uh, and he says it also allows them, the remote teaching also allows them to, to gain more knowledge and to experience consisting, consistent teaching. So our lovely testimonial there and, and very pleased that the Picascopes have worked out so well for uh, the University of Leeds. That's great. So I mentioned earlier on that we were delighted to have a, a, an interview with a, a leading UK university about their experience of uh, adopting Picascopes for remote teaching. Now, Dr. Ken Elliott at the University of Birmingham kindly agreed to, to do such an interview with me. Uh, we recorded this last week, so I'm going to play this back in a second. But the University of Birmingham purchased 250 Picascope 2204As for remote teaching. And these have replaced lab-based teaching for students studying remotely from, from home. And like a lot of other partners, Dr. Elliott's produced course material for the students to use with the units for remote learning. So uh, obviously, we talked about that being an important part of the, the teaching experience. And here at PICO, we're very interested in if universities want to collaborate with us to create a repository for such course material, then please do get in touch because it would be of benefit to the academic community more broadly if we were able to have um, a, a repository for such course material. So that would be, um, we'd be very pleased to hear from anybody that would be interested in that. So I've got this short interview with, um, with Ken, which I'm going to play for you now. And I'm joined by Dr. Ken Elliott from the University of Birmingham, who's very kindly agreed to talk to us uh, briefly about a real t uh, test case of using Picascopes in education. So, Ken, good afternoon. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, excellent. Very well indeed. Thank you. So, thanks ever so much for agreeing to talk to us about uh, the use of Picascopes in, in remote learning and, and education for our webinar. Uh, could you possibly give us a little bit of background about your, uh, your use case? Uh, so, what challenges you were facing and why you contacted PICO uh, in order to talk about uh, using Picascopes for your students, please. Well, basically, we realised quite early on that the, the labs may not run. So I decided I would try and uh, invent some home experiments. And the first thing that occurred to me was doing some electronics and using the Picascope. Um, I already had a Picascope, which I bought a couple of years earlier and found it fantastically easy to use. Uh, with good display and things like that, and thought it was the obvious thing to use. So basically, uh, I contacted Picascope and said, uh, we've got 200 students, and we may want to run 200 uh, experiments with 200 students. Can you supply 200 Picascopes? And uh, they said, yes, we'll be able to do that. And uh, we ordered the Picascopes, and uh, I designed some experiments, and we've probably got 250 students uh, all over the world um, Doing, our, doing my experiments. I've set uh, some experiments on DC measurements and then on AC, and uh, it's all going quite well. Fantastic. So that was obviously driven by the, the current climate and the, and the pandemic and the need to be able to teach remotely as opposed to being teaching in the lab. Absolutely, yes, yes. 
Okay. So it's interesting you mention uh, students from abroad. So I guess the um, the form factor and the portability of the picoscopes was important, the ability to actually get them to their destinations. Well, clearly, I mean, we, we couldn't send, uh, you know, bench type scopes anywhere around the world. And these are quite tiny and uh, easy to use um, and obviously work on multiple platforms as well, which is also very useful. So, uh, yes, yeah, we just posted out to all sorts of places, Norway, China, all over the place, mostly in the UK. Um, and lots of students are working from home and some of them are on the campus and have actually come onto campus to use them. But uh, it's mostly uh, mostly at home. Okay, that's very interesting. So why did you choose Pico? Obviously, we've talked about the form factor, but were there other factors that influenced your, your decision to go with us? Well, basically, my experience of using them and finding them so easy to use mm -hmm. and so intuitive. And of course, I mean, students are not very happy with using bench type scopes with knobs and controls and things, whereas they're quite familiar with using uh, using a mouse and cursors and things like that. So it's a much more easy way for the students to work and uh, that's one of the main reasons we went for them okay yeah, that's good to know i guess everybody's got a laptop computer haven't they and one of the great advantages of using picoscopes as opposed to, to bench top scopes even in, in a more traditional environment is the fact that you've already got that processing power on your on your desk absolutely i mean uh, so you know basically the student just plug them in we, we send them the components to do the experiments and and there's a script which is online and off they go. And to be honest, we haven't had, we, we have Zoom sessions where they can get support, but we haven't had very many people uh, asking for help because the, everything's worked out so so well. Wow, that's brilliant. Really good to know. So you say you had 200 students. So did you buy 200 picoscopes? It was one, one per person. Uh, in fact, we bought 250 in the end because the university upped the number of students on the course. So we bought 250 uh, picoscopes and each student got one. Normally in the lab, we, students work in pairs, but in this case, obviously, that couldn't happen because of the lockdown. So we bought one for each student. Okay, oh, that's good. And has the feedback, you, you mentioned that the, the feedback's been positive. Is there anything in particular that the students have picked up on that they like about the picoscopes as opposed to uh, more traditional alternatives? Well, I think it's just intuitive, really, that they, they can see what they want on, on, on the display. The ability to have a, a large display, you know, on the size of, of a, a PC monitor. And also the fact that, it, for our point of view, um, it, it allows you to make measurements uh, and it, it gives you a value for the a voltage or, or whatever uh, and a resistance too. And the fact that the devices are 8 bit is quite useful. You might think, oh, that's quite low resolution. But the fact it's eight bits means the students are then aware of the errors and can take that into account. Another interesting point. So, of course, we do make and sell higher resolution picoscopes up to, up to 16 bits uh, vertical resolution. And I guess that this introduction to the picoscope ecosphere, if you like, is really good for students moving forward. So uh, if they, they become accustomed to using our software and our products, I guess that that sets them up for, for the future as well, doesn't it? Well, I think the thing that impressed me more than anything really was that the Picoscope 6 software, which you provide, obviously works on very high spec machines, but you have all of the facilities which you get, expect to see on a high spec machine on a very cheap piece of case um, with low resolution. Okay. So doing uh, mathematical functions, subtraction, that kind of thing, and doing the, the spectral analysis all of these you'd never sit, expect to find on a piece of kit that's costing like a hundred pounds. So that, that's made a massive difference, really. Okay. Yeah, we, we've done that deliberately because we want the uh, the entry level scopes to have the same level of feature and experience as the products higher up in the range. So uh, it really is once students are bought into that, then they can they can transfer and the bigger scope so scope six software works with all our scopes up to up to five hundred megahertz um, high bandwidth scopes. So that they're, that once they become accustomed to that um, that environment, then they're good to go for the future into the into their careers. So that's that's the reason we've done that. Well, absolutely. I mean, the point is that the students see these features and think, you know, this is just amazing. This is exactly what we want to do. And, uh, you know, OK, as you say, they're using a, a relatively entry um, piece of kit. But, you know, in their future careers, I guess they'll, they'll say, oh, we want to pick a scope. In fact, a, a number of my colleagues um, who work in industry, I've talked to them about the pick a scope and they've said, oh, yes, uh, I'm going to get my employees to get one of these. Um, 
get a chap who's a, um, an, a tr an engineer who travels around and fixes bits of uh, high tech equipment uh, has actually bought one of these as a result of that. So uh, that's brilliant. But, that's really yeah. good. It's a word of mouth referral. It's, it's, it's really good. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's that's good to know. So moving forward, obviously, we're all looking forward to when we come out of the, the current pandemic situation and we get it back into into more our uh, something more approaching normal. Do you anticipate using the picoscopes moving forward for future gear groups and to, to do these experiments to give you the flexibility that you've, you've gained from them? Yes, well, as I said, well, we normally work in, in with students in pairs. So we've got 250 um, picoscopes. I think we'll, we'll continue to work in pairs. And so basically we're going to have like 100 picoscopes spare. So I imagine what we will, this hasn't been decided yet, we will probably get those moved into the second year. Um, so anytime a student in the second year wants to do, do an experiment that needs a, an oscilloscope, they'll use the picoscope, which they've already seen. So it will be a continuation. And what will happen in the third year, I don't know. But uh, certainly we expect to use it in future years. Okay. That's really good to know. And you mentioned developing lab experiments. Um, is there anything else, uh, material-wise or otherwise, that, that the Pico perhaps could um, could help provide? So we, we've talked a little bit about the possibility of uh, a resource for curriculum moving forward that our academic institutions can share. Is that something that you think might be uh, might be a useful repository? I think it might be. Yes, uh, um, I think most people like to uh, generate their own experiments, and I certainly do. Um, but I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be able to share some of this uh, this material. Um, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So, again, looking forward, I think that we're probably all going to be working a little bit differently uh, in the future. And I guess that the portability and form factor, if you do need still to do some remote working, even after normality is returned, uh, gives an advantage if there are some students perhaps who are working remotely or some international students who are doing distance learning as well. Uh, well, absolutely. I mean, there, there is a possibility that we may actually just say to the students, look, this is your picoscope. Um, use it in all three years. Um, anytime you need to use an oscilloscope in the laboratory, just bring your picoscope along like you would bring your, your uh, laptop. So that's another possible way. It, it hasn't been decided yet, but that's that's possible. OK, yeah, I guess they're um, relatively speaking inexpensive enough that they could be viewed as a resource for that student, a bit well, like textbooks, etc. Yes, I mean, a hundred pounds, uh, you know, compared with the, the fees the students are paying is, is not a lot of money, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, for, yeah. as you say, for a hundred pounds, you, you get a fully fe featured oscilloscope that they could potentially keep and use. And well, and absolutely. Use. I mean, then, you know, when they when they leave, when they graduate, they may take it with them, you know, so it's... I, I think that might, we haven't decided but it's not a lot of money, uh, you know, in the budget of the university, and I think that might even happen. Okay, that's wonderful. Our, well, Dr. Elliot, thank you so much for your, your time, and I'm really pleased to hear that you've had such positive experience with the Picoscopes. That's that's really great to know. And uh, we really hope that we see a future generation of engineers coming out of the University of Birmingham with our Picoscopes in mind for their, their future test and measurement requirements. I'm sure that would be, be true. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. So thank you again very much to, to Dr. Elliot for taking the time to produce that um, that recording with me. Uh, I hope that that showed everybody on this call the uh, real use case for picoscopes in education. So uh, it's been a real success story for the University of Birmingham and for their students and has a, and it enabled them to carry on uh, teaching remotely during the current pandemic situation. So we're, we're delighted with, um, with that and with the feedback that um, we, we've got from that. So I promised at the beginning of the uh, of the webinar to talk a little bit about other Pico technology uh, test and measurement equipment for use in educational applications. So we're best known for our, our real-time oscilloscopes, uh, which, as I mentioned, we have in up to 500 megahertz bandwidth. Uh, but we also offer other products within our TNM range suitable for teaching and for remote learning. So that includes, well, these products include a range of data loggers. You see in the, in the picture there, the middle picture there, uh, with the PC with the laptop connected to uh, one of our uh, data loggers. That's a TCO8 thermocouple temperature data logger. 
uh, and we have a range of data loggers for measuring parameters such as voltage, current, temperature, etc. But in addition to that, we also have some high-end products, which, like all of Pico's products, are extremely cost-effective, uh, exceptional value for money at a given price point. Uh, and they include our vector network analyzers at both 6 and 8.5 and gigahertz. So you can see our vector network analyzer picture at the, the left-hand side of this, the slide. And we also offer a range of sampling oscilloscopes as well. So we, we do have... Um, RF products in our range that are suitable for use within our educational uh, applications. Uh, it's also worth mentioning as a final point, all of our products have documented uh, programming interface API for teaching programming. So you can not only uh, use the products to, to teach and to learn, but you can also teach the, 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 the programming of them as well. So as a final demonstration, then, I'm going to show a short video produced by one of my colleagues, uh, Stuart Merlis, who's our applications engineer here at um, Pico t &M. And he's looking at the vector network analyzer together with our network metrology training kit. Uh, and again, this is designed to, to couple with the VNA for uh, teaching applications. So uh, a third short final video here. My name is Stuart Merlis, and I'm an FAE here at Pico Technology. In this short video and demonstration, I'm going to be talking about the Network Metrology Training Kit and the Pico VNA106 to characterize a low pass and band pass Butterworth filter. The Network Metrology Training Kit is designed to support learning practice and experience of RF and network measurements in the sub 6 gigahertz frequency range. The trainer or the student needs only a vector network analyzer and the network metrology training kit to start performing network measurement tasks. Unsurprisingly, Pico recommend the use of high performance BNA instruments, which are exceedingly good value. In this first example, we are going to be measuring the on PCB low pass Butterworth filter example. Having calibrated the SMA test ports, I've now connected the PCB low pass filter. In the screen, we can see our results. The measurements reveal the filter to have a 3 dB point of around 260 megahertz and the group delay that peaks sharply at the same 3 dB roll off point. Our time domain shows a relatively tidy pulse response. This is a reflective filter one that reflects stop band signals rather than absorbing the energy as an absorbent filter would. It also becomes clear that for small receive signals with a deep attenuation stop band, the VNA struggles to resolve phase and thus group delay, um, group delay being the rate of change of phase. In this illustration, we are going to be taking some measurements from the on PCB bandpass Butterworth filter wideband sweep after calibration. Our first results will initially show that the bandpass filter is fully reflective in the stop bands with two relatively good match bands. In our S21 log mag results, what we can see is the pass band is between 150 to 250 megahertz. Um, and in the deep stop bands only goes out to about two gigahertz. You will also observe the reinsertion passband at around 3 gigahertz. What we can see in our group delay measurements is that we have very significant group delay in the passband and phase and ungroup delay uncertain in the stop bands. In our final illustration, we are going to take a closer look at the Butterworth band pass filter on the PCB. The measurement, as you can see, uses 10 megahertz to 610 megahertz with 201 sweep points. Our initial observations show on the S11 log mag that the band pass filter is fully reflective in the stop bands, while the pass band S21 log mag is around 150 to 250 megahertz. Our group delay here results show that there is a very significant group delay 
and spread of delay in the pulse band. Ooh, so thank you very much indeed to Stuart for that. So I hope that gives everybody on this call uh, a little bit of a taste of the, the Pico RF product portfolio and the use of the Vector Network Analyzer uh, in, in teaching applications. So with that, I'll then just move on to summarize. So obviously, I hope that I've demonstrated through, uh, throughout this webinar that PicoScope and indeed the Pico product portfolio is, is great for remote teaching and engineering. Um, there's been very substantial uptake of, of our products for this application. And we've demonstrated the numerous advantages of the Pico solution over our, our competitors in terms of form factor, software, support, uh, all of the things that make Pico possible and feasible for remote teaching and, and distance learning. And those advantages have resulted in, in wide adoption of the technology by universities, universities and colleges internationally. Uh, and I showed you the slide with, with some of the organizations that we're, we're working on. So we then just touched on briefly the other TNM products, the test and measurement products that we have, which are also ideal for use in academia, the, the vector network analyzers, the uh, data loggers, etc. cetera. Uh, probably worth pointing out if you or if there are any of our distributors on this call who are, have customers who are interested in ordering for the next semester or the next term or indeed the next academic year, it's very much worthwhile ordering in advance. So we've been selling very large quantities of these units for teaching. And as a consequence, some of the lead times that we're seeing are a little bit longer than perhaps uh, we would normally see. So if you're planning on buying our units, potentially hundreds of units for a teaching application, then it's definitely worth considering working with us to make sure that we can help you uh, in, with as much notice as possible. So uh, that's consideration for anybody looking to do this, perhaps for the um, for the academic year that starts next September. So as a final note, our uh, if people want to see more details on our educational program and our educational website pages, Gemma has just posted uh, a link in the chat forum with the uh, landing page for the educational website pages. So please feel free to, to, to browse those. So just in concluding, I'd like to say thanks very much indeed again to the academics who've helped us produce this webinar, particularly Dr. Ken Elliott from the University of Birmingham, Dr. Roger Berry from uh, the University of Leeds, and Dr. Francesco Fortnetti from the University of Bristol. Uh, thank you ever so much for all, all the content and all the help. Uh, and also to my colleagues here, Gemma Hull, our marketing manager for hosting, and to Carl Bradbury and to Stuart Merlis for producing the, the, the videos. So uh, I hope you found that webinar useful. I've seen there have been some chat questions come through, some of which have been answered as we've gone along. Uh, and I'll hand back to Gemma Hull as our host for uh, any questions, any further questions that need to be answered. Okay, thank you, Mike. Um, there was a comment and a question that was put into the chat box, as you said. So Arthur mentioned that if local government do not allow a finance, or do not allow to finance a scope as equipment for every student because it's not a study book, a solution could be to put a study book list, put it on the study book list so it gets paid by local government, as that is what they did in Holland. Um, so just a comment for everyone else. And um, Len had a question, which was, are there any cables included with the scope? I'm thinking particularly of the ribbon cable shown in the, the photo. And a couple of our colleagues have answered that. But just to recap that the 2204A that was shown in the picture, I believe, at the time, does not come with the ribbon cable or the digital cable, as we call it. Um, but if you buy any MSO option, and I put a link down in the chat box, then they come supplied in a kit, which has that cable with them. I don't know if you want to add anything else to that, Mike. Uh, no, I think it just obviously the, the, the probes, um, the 2204A would come with probes. There is a probeless option as well. So mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you, you order the scope and make sure that it comes in a kit with the probes if you want the analog probes as well. Uh, we do offer um, versions with digital channels as well if there's a need to have digital channels. And, and again, make sure that you order the MSO versions if uh, that's what you need. So just, just be careful about what's, what's being ordered. 
Lovely. And that's it from the questions. I think everyone else is just saying thank you to you for a good webinar. Ooh, well, no, thank you very much indeed to everybody for attending. And thank you for all the uh, the kind words in the chat. That's that's super. It's been yeah, thank you. a real pleasure to be able to deliver the content. And I hope that we can we can continue bringing Picascopes to customers for their, their educational remote learning and, and distance learning uh, applications. Lovely. Right. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Gemma.